When I tried out the Chewy Mini Book X not too long ago, the one thing I was disappointed in was at the price point, it just didn't feel like it was really worth it. So I was taking a look at some stuff, and I finally came found this. This is the Acer Aspire 3 Spin 14. This goes for $300 right now on Amazon, but I actually got this on sale on Target's website for $250. So expect that to go on sale during Black Friday and the holiday season. Now, I'm almost confident that this is going to perform better than the Chewy Mini Book 10. It costs less. It is a little bit bigger, so that's the only difference. But this is not a comparison video. The reason why I think this is going to be better overall and probably one of the better options for 2-in-1s is because this has a 12th gen Intel Core i3 N305 processor, 8 gigabytes of LP, DDR5 RAM. And I know 8 gigabytes of RAM is normal, but it may not always be common at this price point, sadly enough. It has a 1920 by 1200 IPS multi-touch display and then a 360 hinge because it is, that's what they call a 2-in-1. A uh, 256 six gigabytes of PCIe storage, so that is pretty low. There is a SSD storage or expansion, I think, somewhere. I'll have to double check that. And it says up to 10 hours of battery life, so we'll see. It says it has Windows 11, and then on the side, we got some more specs. I'm not going to go over everything here, but uh, the graphics does say it's Intel UHD graphics. I was, really wasn't expecting anything like dedicated, like NVIDIA or something like that to be in here. But still, it might perform decently. You never know. One way to tell if you have a new one or not is if there's a seal. Inside the box, got a place to ask them questions if need be, so that's kind of nice. So down here should be the charger. Unfortunately, it's not a USB-C charger, so yeah, take that how you will. The laptop itself, as well as a user guide, and then there's a warranty guide here. It's, it looks pretty big, but it's actually just in a bunch of different languages. English is the first one here. So I'm not gonna go over everything here, but if you wanna pause the video right now and kind of read that, I mean, hopefully it's not too blurry. Here's the laptop itself with the Acer logo on top. Uh, it's got like a simple finish, kind of feels like plastic. On the back here, it looks like it's either the, either the speaker grill or exhaust. And then just four rubber tacks on the back or the bottom here. Actually, these this might be the speaker. I'll have to check uh, in a few minutes. But anyways, Got a few ports here, including a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Still nice to see that they have that because it's, it's becoming more and more rare these days. And then got some more stuff here, including an HDMI port, charger, USB 3.0. Just opening it up, it looks like your standard typical laptop here. Nothing too special about it. You got the webcam on top there, keyboards here, touchpad. This weighs about three and a half pounds and it is kind of thick, being about, uh, what is it, three-fourths of an inch. Like just slightly below 0.75 inches or almost that. Still not too bad. And this is 360, so it can go all the way backwards. And initially, I thought it said it had four different modes, so I thought the hinge was locked in on four different areas. But no, it's pretty flexible. This feels heavy for tablet mode, but it's still there. It's actually really large, and everything is like really easy to navigate through. Out of the box, there's just under 200 gigs free, 198. So that's really not a lot. You can f free up like maybe a hundred, a few hundred megs by uninstalling certain things that are pre-installed. I already have a lot of stuff downloaded. Unfortunately, I should have. I wish I showed you earlier, but things like PowerPoint and Microsoft Word. I wonder if those can be uninstalled. That would be helpful. I saw Solitaire on there too. Yeah, this kind of stuff you can just try to get rid of and see how that goes. But even with that, it's still not enough, honestly, in my opinion. Unless, if you're going to be using a lot of, like, if you're not going to be using this for gaming, for just, like, school stuff, this is perfect. The screen size, the flexibility. I wouldn't say it's really too portable, but it's better than a 15.6-inch display. And the bezels aren't too bad. It's, like, kind of not thick, but not really too thin either. So it's kind of in the middle spot there, sweet spot, I would say, almost. Average is probably the better term here. So yeah, everything seems pretty average, I would say. And also with battery life, I uh, don't think it shows me exactly like the usage and everything. It shows here I've had this on since like 1 p.m. Now it's like around 7 or 8 almost, but it doesn't mean the screen was on the whole time. Actually, it was like 
off for a good amount. I do know that it mentioned when I was at 51% that this has like 2 hours and 23 minutes of battery life left. So you can get about 4 to 5 hours of on-screen time. It's really not that much. And 10 hours of battery life was a huge stretch by Acer. So yeah, I know they say that it says your battery life may vary based on device and how you use this and other conditions. But yeah, for the most part, I don't. I think 90% of people are not going to get 10 hours of of use on this overall unless if they're com combining like standby time then that's a different story but anyways here's uh, the camera it's mediocre at best nothing too special wasn't really expecting too much either but yeah enough for video calls really that's it not really much more to say besides that the keyboard and trackpad itself are pretty responsive there's good feedback on here surprisingly no backlit keyboard and the trackpad is pretty good as well. No issues there. The screen itself is, I, I like it. It's 1920 by 1200, which is great for watching videos at full HD 1080p on streaming platforms. And this is Windows 10, so there's nothing to worry about for widevine level L1 or L2 or L3 like Android devices. If you don't know what that is, and just ignore what I said. But this starts off with Windows 10 in S mode. So S mode is like, it prevents you from downloading stuff outside like Steam or other games, whatever you want to download. But you can turn that off in the settings by just going into the Windows Store. And we do have a few Windows Store games downloaded here, so we're going to test everything out in just a moment. One thing I forgot to almost mention is the brightness is mediocre. This won't be usable outdoors, unfortunately. Maybe it doesn't. That's the norm, you know, can't expect too much. I feel like it's around 300 to 350 nits for this one. It's as bright as the average laptop would be and really can't expect too much at this price point. The touchscreen itself is also pretty responsive. I haven't noticed any delays whatsoever. It works pretty well. Oh, and one last thing is speakers. So the speakers do emit from the bottom here on both sides. So it does feel a little bit more immersive like it's front facing almost when it's intense mode like this. And it can also go into full tablet mode again if need be, but this is great for watching videos, the tent mode. I may have mentioned this already, but basic tasks are pretty good on here. I haven't noticed any major issues or delays. I haven't tested out games. And by the way, this is running Windows 11 Home prior to what I said. I thought it was running Windows 10 because it, there was a pop-up that was saying it's running Windows 10 on the S mode. So that's why I thought it was on Windows. Anyways, it's Windows 11 Home and the processor is up here. Intel Core i3 N305 at, clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. That's a lot better than Chewy's, what was it, 800 megahertz on the N100 processor. And it goes for the same as this. It may be a little more actually. But yeah, anyways, let's check out how game performance is on here. And really quickly, right before Roblox, the Cinebench score shows that it had a 4349 multi-core score and CPU score was 624. Single core is pretty low. Multi-core feels a little bit higher. It's crazy when you look at this. The This works better than the i7-4850HQ. That is a lower-end i7, so I guess I get that. But it's not the worst-performing device on here. It's definitely on the lower end, though, regardless. And that's to be expected. But the single core score did feel pretty low. Surprisingly, it wasn't the last one, but it was second to last. First game here is Roblox. It's called, like, Blocks Fruit or something, or Box Fruit. So far, it's performing pretty well. I haven't noticed any major issues. Actually, there's no, like, stutters here and there either. So that's a great sign. Believe it or not, like this does cause there are frame rate drops and everything that happen more fre frequently on other devices that I've tested out, even at this range. So this is not bad. Next game I'm trying out is from Steam, uh, Flash Out 3D. This is kind of a, a low-end game, but I set the graphics to pretty high, so let's see what we get here. Alright, this game is performing pretty well. Even at the highest settings at 1920 by 1200 resolution, it's not really skipping a beat. It's, it says it's 60 FPS here consistently. So yeah, that is pretty nice. That's a good sign. Although, again, this is a pretty old game too. It's really not... I mean, it's kind of to be expected, I guess you could say. But nonetheless, this can handle low-end games pretty well. Next game is Dark Souls, and this is garbage. I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that it's not running well, actually. 
and it's actually kind of just stuck at 15 FPS. I wonder if I move it down. Overall, despite the game performance, which is subpar, I think this is a solid, solid laptop for for school, I would say. And maybe just in general, just keeping it at home, having like a secondary one or something for very simple tasks. And again, low-end gaming works too. Mainly for the price point, it, that's why it's good. At right now, I think it's $300 to $320 on Amazon. And when it goes on sale, you can get it for $250. That's a really good price in my opinion. But if there is something better, please do let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. Let me know what you guys think about this laptop too in general. Was I too generous? Because again, I liked everything for what I saw for, at the price point. I don't really know of any other laptops that go at this price for $250 where you can get 8 gigs of RAM. Pretty much everything you see on here, an i3 processor and stuff. So anyways, guys, stay tuned for the future as I'll be checking out more laptops and tablets and affordable smartphones. Speaking of that, I did just get this Chewy iPad Hi10 Max uh, from Chewy themselves, which I'll be checking out soon. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.